Hey, Skyler here from the Mint Change You Can Wear. And today what we're going to be looking at is how to make Morgan dollars into really small sizes using the Swedish wrap method. Uh, this method was brought to light by a guy named Mikhail Moller, and he's from Sweden, that's the name Swedish wrap. Alright, so let's get right into it. So the very first thing we need to start out with is a Morgan that's already been folded. I didn't want to show that because you can look at that from any of my other Morgan dollar videos. Um, you can use the ball bearing method, or lately I've been using this folding cone from Jason's work. So you could do that either way. So this thing is cone, and I've re-annealed it, and now we're ready to start bringing it down to a smaller size. This is what we're going to be using. This is the uh, Swedish Wrap Complete Kit from Jason's Works. You can check them out at jasonsworks.com. And I like to use the Swedish Wrap for basically any Morgan dollar, 11 and a half and smaller. Anything larger than that, you can pretty much get to it in a standard method. Um, sometimes if it gets a little crooked or wobbly, you can actually put it in the Swedish Wrap die and it'll take the wobble out, so that's another good use for it. But basically, 11 and a half and smaller. I wrote out this chart when I started uh, started using these dies and basically what these will do is tell you where you're expecting to have the ring size end up when you're done with a certain size plunger and now if we look at it the largest plunger over there is one second down two three and then so on to the fifth is the smallest so this is what this uh, graph shows when you're done actually using the first plunger on a Morgan dollar you're gonna end up with a size 17 and then say so you keep going all the way down to the bottom of the second plunger, you're going to end up with a size 14 and a half. Third plunger, 10 and 3 quarter. And that 10 and 3 quarter actually will come out of the bottom of the die. And this over here, there's these witness lines on these plungers, you can see. So when you're done plunging with the first plunger, you'll have two of those segments above your die. And uh, so on the second plunger, you'll have three and a half above the die. This, the reason you want to know that reveal, for it's two reasons actually. You don't want to over press these down and then damage your brass plungers. That's one big one. And um, the second one being, say you want to get in between these sizes. Well, now you can actually stop halfway on the second plunger and maybe have more of a reveal. That way you can get to in between sizes like that, if that makes any sense to you. And there's one more word of warning before we get started. I love a six ton press. I have a six ton press. It's pretty much the only press I've had for years. But when you start using this, it's really easy to damage these. Look at that. I hit very first time I used it. I was being real careful. I didn't want to over plunge it because I knew it was going to be a problem. But there it is. I hit this side of it and immediately dented it. And it didn't take hardly any force in that six ton press to do that. And these tools are just too nice to ruin so quickly. So. I really recommend just going ahead and getting one of these one-ton arbor presses. It's a whole lot easier to not damage those plungers in something like that because it just does not produce the same amount of force. All right, so I think we have all the basics out of the way. Now it's time to get started. So the very first step to starting the Swedish wrap once you have this thing combed is get this reeded edge reduced in a regular die until it's just a bit larger than your first plunger. And that way you make sure this has good contact on this reeded edge. If it's a little too big like this is right now, you have a chance of it sliding in there and really damaging your ring. So you wouldn't want to do that. And actually, you know what I've been doing is I've just been foregoing the first plunger and reducing this down to the second plunger. A little bit a little bit larger than that second plunger because I don't usually use the first one. Alright, so here we are at the six ton press. I have the reeded edge down in my die. I have a little Pepe Lube on there to make sure it goes down smoothly. And we're going to start reducing this thing. Alright, let's take a look at it, see if it's about the right size to fit on that second plunger. Now. And it looks pretty good, yeah, that'll work. It's just a little bit bigger than the plunger, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So now the next step is to start wrapping it with some Teflon tape. So here we go, we're going to start wrapping it. And it's going to take quite a bit of Teflon to do this. And um, before I even start, actually, I'm going to tell you guys this. If you're like me, you're super duper cheap and you don't want to waste any money on anything, but let me just tell you, you can get 10 of these rolls of Teflon over at Harbor Freight for $1.99. So it's like 20 cents a roll. So we don't need to be super cheap on this. If it costs us half a roll to do this, that's only 10 cents. And that's worth not destroying, you know, if you're using like about uncirculated or uncirculated Morgans, it's not worth 10 cents to ruin it. And then you're going to want to wrap it to where 
what I usually do is the first half will be wrap, you know, half off of there so that way you're covering the reeded edge too. You want to make sure that's protected. So one, two, I'm going to do like 25 wraps. English, English, Swedish, All right, that should do it. And now we're just going to fold this stuff in inside the uh, coin. Now we're ready to go. So I'm going to use this first plunger, the biggest one, to just put it, put this in there and then help guide it down nice and evenly. Because that Teflon does take up some space and it can be compressed just as easily with your fingers. Get it down there. Okay. About like that. So now we can look down in there. We can see it now it's seated real nice. Now we're going to take our second plunger. This is one we made it just a little bit bigger than so that way this will fit on there nice and good and make it nice and even in the hole. You want to make sure it's sitting on top of that nice and perfectly evenly. Right, so now we have it nice and even in there and we have it in the arbor press and we're ready to start pressing down. So we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. Right now, if you remember right, the reveal that I was talking about right here says it has three and a half of those spaces above the die, and that's because we have to start stacking the other bigger plungers on top. So the second one requires the first one to be stacked on it. The third one's going to re require the first and second ones to be stacked on top of it to push it all the way through. So by the time we're done with this, we're going to have three and a half of those witness lines sticking up, or roughly about that. Let's take a look as we go here. Here we go. Just take it nice and easy. No need to rush it. There we go, that was pretty much it. Now you can see roughly, well maybe it's almost four, I probably stopped a little bit early. But better to be too early than shove it down on that die too hard. All right, let's pull it out and see what we have here. So we take the first one off, take the second one off, and out comes this plug. We have this one we can take off. It's got the Teflon on it. We'll remove. And you can see, take a look at this Teflon. See how it totally preserved the detail in there? If it was too thin, then you'll start seeing problems like... Um, you'll see the uh, the detail coming through the Teflon and that means you're hitting the detail in the die. That's not good. So be careful of that. Like I said, use as much Teflon as you need to. Don't be cheap. Pull this Teflon off. And we're sitting about at a 14 and a half. Exactly like my notes is, had said. So we're exactly on track now. If you wanted to make a size 11 and a half ring, you'd stop right exactly here because 14 and a half, you reduce it three sizes to get to your target size to get a nice curved edge so you'd be sitting right at an 11 and a half and the way I like to reduce these is I'll get one of Jason's 17 degree dies and I'll reduce it down two sizes and or even a size just a size and a half something like that size and a half to two sizes and then I finish it off to get a nice dome shape inside of either his 25 degree die or a doming block. And to be honest, a doming block is one of my favorite things to use for that. It gives it a nice, really pretty round curve. But for the sake of the video, we're going to keep going down farther. Before we re-anneal it, let's go ahead and reduce this reeded edge to where it fits this third plunger now really good. You can see it's a little bit too big. We want to reduce it to where it's just a bit bigger than this third plunger so we can keep going down further. All right, that would be enough to do it, probably. All right. Just a little bit bigger than the plunger again, so we are ready to re-anneal it now and start re-wrapping. We are re-annealed and ready to start wrapping. This third plunger will push it all the way through the bottom of this, this die. I have found when it goes through the bottom of the die, you need to actually have some extra wraps of Teflon around this top portion of the of the coin or of the ring because it tends to uh, be pretty rough on the coin so a couple extra wraps will keep it safe okay fold it back in And 
we are ready to go again. So now we have all three plungers we're going to need to push this third one all the way through. I'm going to take the second one now and just get this thing started like we did the first time with the first one. Squish it down there and get it seated. Okay, get that back out. So now it's seated down there again. Now we're going to take this third smallest one for this die and seat it in there nice and even. Same reason we don't want to hit the edge of the coin. We don't want it to go all crooked in there. So make sure it's nice and even. Spend a little bit of time doing this, it's worth it. And we'll stick the second one on top. Even that one up. And now it's off to the one ton arbor press. Here we are at the press, ready to start pressing down. But now, when you start pressing down this second and third one, it's going to start coming out the bottom of this. We're going to have to move our plate here to have the biggest hole that this thing can pass through. So line it up. Feel the bottom here to make sure you have clearance so it has plenty of room to pass through the bottom. And now we're going to start pressing down. Slow and steady. Okay, now we just bottom that one out, and you can see it's starting to come out the bottom already. So now we're going to put the third one on top and push it the rest of the way through. Alright, back to this chart again. So this third plunger will end up with a 10 and 3 quarter on a Morgan, and it'll come all the way at the bottom of the die. Alright, just popped out. Here's what we came up with. The Teflon caped it nice and nice and protected. There we go. And we are sitting right at 10 and 3 quarter, exactly like the chart said. Now from here, I can make anywhere from a size 8 to a 7, 6 and a half from this, from this plunger. If you really wanted to go smaller, you can take that next smallest die and just keep on going. And you can get even smaller and smaller and smaller. What I am going to do now, though, is I'm going to finish this and make it a size 8 so you guys can see the dies I use for that. And the first step for that is I'm just going to go ahead right away and take that, that sharp lip off the inside of this ring. And the way you can do it, you can use a Dremel, you can use a deburring tool. I just use a half round file most of the time. So I'm just going to start taking that off. Alright, so the edge is all filed down and then I sanded it with a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper just to make it smooth again. And we are ready to start sizing. But first, we need to re-anneal this thing. All right, so we have our Morgan read it side down in the die. It's all Pepe lubed up, ready to go. And it's about 11 and a quarter now after I've sanded it and filed it. And I want to bring it down to about a nine, nine and a half, something like that, to, in order to shoot for a size eight. I like to get within about one or one and a half sizes of my target size in a regular die, and then I'll switch to a more steep die like that 25 degree die or the doming block, so that's why I'm doing that. Alright, so that got us about a nine and a quarter, so that's good for that side. Now we'll switch around and do that side to make it match. Alright, that should about do it. So this is what, we, what we're looking at right now before I start putting in the doming block. It's about a little, almost nine and a half now. A little bit bigger than nine and a quarter. That, what that doming block is going to do is just curl those edges in really nicely to make it give it a nice curved look. And I think that's what most people tend to want. If you want to do a straight sides, you know, then you're going to have to just only reduce this thing a little bit, you know. So, and before you start, make sure you always put some lube on there because you want it to go down evenly in the die. That's a really important step. Another thing really important to remember is make sure your plunger is nice and even on there and it's coming down in the middle. If you don't do that, it can push to one side or another, making a crooked ring. All right, let's take a look. So that size just under an eight, I think that'll be perfect because it's gonna flare out a little bit when we squish this side. And that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so that's what we came up with, a size eight Morgan dollar. And it's pretty decent looking. It's not abnormally shaped, really. So now all we really need to do is finish this thing up and get it antiqued and polished up. Alright guys, that was my how to make Morgans in smaller sizes with the Swedish wrap video. And as always guys, thank you for watching.